Hi, I'm William, and this is The Wine Room at Putnam Market, Saratoga Springs, upstate New York. And we've started wine lessons again, and so we've got this class full of eager wine professionals working out how they can best describe the wine. And one of the wines that they were struggling with just last night was this. It's um, Schoffitz Rangen Clos Saint Theobald, a uh, Grand Cru Riesling from Alsace, the um, vintage 2016. And this is a fabulous wine. It's a fabulous wine because it's wonderfully rich. It has a tremendous amount of tension to it, which, it, which is to say it's kind of like twanging almost. It's it's like a, it's like it's like a like a violin string, and you pluck it, and it it reverberates and reverberates and reverberates. But those aren't the sorts of things that they're being asked to talk about. They're being asked to talk about. They're being asked to talk about apples and maybe caramels and salt. And that seems to me that whilst those things might be good for wine professionals, they don't really tell you the everyday consumer, whether you want to drink it. And I was thinking to myself, you might like to see some of the ways people used to do these sorts of conversations. Now, here's an interesting chap, George Sainsbury. And this is his notes on a cellar book, probably dates from around the beginning of the 20th century. And here you can say he's talking about the fact that he got these magnums of Mouton Rothschild 1975, and he says here, um, I bought, bought them at an extremely moderate price, and I hardly need tell anyone who knows claret history what it turned out to be. I don't think I ever had a better, and it gave me an agreeable triumph. The late Monsieur Belgeam, one of the best of men, of scholars, and of foreign speakers of English, was dining with me. During dinner, I had perhaps rather rashly said, I thought we got some of the best French wine in England. And he replied, politely but doubtfully, yes, you get some of the best. And, with a little hesitation, some of the worst. So I laughed and waited. When he had the mouton in his glass, I said, now that is from behind the fagot, is it not? And he bowed as only a Frenchman can bow and turned the phrase back into its native French with an emphasis, oui, before it. So what does this mean, behind the fagot, or de derriere les fagots, as I think it might be in French? Well, it's the suspicion that whenever you go to a wine cellar in France and they show you the wine that they have made, they're not really showing you the very best of the wine that they have, because the very best is the secret stash, and the secret stash is derriere les fagots, behind the wood pile. That's where the really good stuff is. It's the secret stash. What a great way to describe a great bottle of wine.